everybody hi hello welcome come on in come on in gather yourselves gather your friends gather your family gather yourselves that's interesting gather your friends gather your families share the link share it with somebody send somebody a message to say hey it's time for go deeper welcome it's so good to see you so good to have you with us this evening we want to thank god for his continued blessings and thank him for continuously providing and taking care of us and meeting our needs and so on and so as we gather together we want to ensure that we are able to flesh out some more what he has to say to us we're piggybacking off what happened on sunday and we're continuing to break it down some more today and we want to make sure that you get as much as you can you know like when you have a piece of coconut and you're juicing you juice it some more and when you're through you just juice it one more time because something is just leaving it yeah so it is with the word of god we want to get as much as we can out of it so come on in come on in welcome good to see you hi hello hey instagram facebook youtube hi so let's just pray as we get cracking and we get into god's word father we just thank you so much for who you are thank you that you love us with an everlasting love you are our everlasting god you are a good father and we just love you with all our hearts thank you for your word thank you for the privilege the opportunity the joy that we get when we rip apart your word and we begin to feed on it like food oh god we pray that you will enlighten us oh holy spirit that you will bring us your truth that you will oh god empower us as we study that we will grow in grace and in the knowledge of you lord jesus so bless this time as we sit together around your table as we deliberate as we partake of your word god may it be nourishment to our spirits and may we be changed and transformed as you intend for us to be we glorify you and thank you now in the name of jesus amen amen so on sunday we talked about change your lens that was the sermon that we had on sunday change your lens and we started talking about you know those of us who are glasses wearers who understand that after a time you have to change your lens if you want to see clearly because over time your vision deteriorates over time the way that you can see we talked about even how some persons have to just you know hold a thing far to be able to see the thing i hold i wish my hand could grow some more yeah so in the same way it is in the natural so it is in the spirit we have to ensure that our vision is clear at all times because if it isn't then we run into problems of tripping up and falling because we're not seeing well yes and if we're not seeing well then it means it will affect how we how how we make certain decisions how we say certain things how we speak how how we conduct ourselves because if we can't say well then we can't move around well so we want to delve in it some more so just to do a quick recap of what we did on sunday so we talked about we made three important points we first of all went into scripture and we looked at the story of the Shunammite woman. We looked in 2 Kings 4, 18 to 26. This woman who was wealthy, the Bible says, and she had her husband and they had their business, they had their field and so on. And the prophet Elisha would come by from time to time and as he visited, she would always invite him home to come and dine and, you know, rest and relax. So much so that herself and her husband built an additional room on their house so they could house him he could have somewhere to stay somewhere private for himself he could stay and so every time he come he would go into that room and rest and refresh and relax and so on and out of his own gratitude to her he'd say you know can I do anything for you and she says no I'm all right I'm good and she he goes you know you, you want me to talk to anybody for you anybody bothering you she said no she said sir really I'm all right he says you know what you're gonna have a you're gonna have a son next year this time you're gonna have a son and she says sir sir please don't do that to me I said, no, you're gonna have a son and sure enough within a year she had her son time passed and the son grew went out into the fields one day with his father and then he just had to cry for his head my head my head my head and then his father says carry him to his mother his mother takes him into her lap and he stays there and about noon he dies 
Now, it would have been tragic if the story stopped there. But here is a woman. Here is the situation that she's looking at. She is looking at a dead child who she incidentally takes up and puts on her, carries him up to Elisha's bedroom, to the prophet, prophet's bedroom, puts him on the bed where the prophet sleeps and shuts the door behind her. Then she says to her husband, get me a servant, get me some transportation to go and find a man of God. And after her husband deliberated a little bit, they deliberated a little bit and then she went got the servant and then they left and went in hot pursuit of the man of god man of god from a distance sees her and says to his servant isn't that the shunammite woman and he said yes and said, you know what let's just see check out how she doing how, how you doing ma'am how you doing because of course her visit would have been unexpected because it is she he would have been the one who was coming by her and her home it wouldn't be that is the other way around. And so, of course, it would no doubt catch the prophet of God. And he would say, lady, you all right, woman? Is it well? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with you? Is it well with your son? And her response was, it is well. Listen, that thing blew my mind because I'm saying she left behind her, her dead son's body. Left it on the bed. And then come to the prophet and says to the prophet, it is well. Perhaps she knew something that other persons didn't know. Perhaps she knew because she saw the different miracles that were performed through the hand of the man of God. And she would say, you know, if you could prophesy, this is of course sanctified speculation. If you could prophesy that I will get a son, then surely you would have some way of getting my son back to life because you made me this promise. And if you read the story further, you will see that the son indeed came back to life. She had to adjust her lens. She had to not call a thing as she saw it. What she saw was really not. She had a dead body in her house. So it's not that the child was ill. The child was dead. But she adjusted her vision and she spoke and looked through the first looked through the eyes of faith and then spoke the word of faith. And by virtue of that, she was able, as it lined up with God's plan and God's will for her life, she was able to benefit from the blessing of having her son's life restored. So we raised three quick points. Um, on Sunday, the first thing we said was, don't allow your pain to be louder than your praise. We're going to flesh out a little bit more. Um, you know, pain has a way of clouding our vision. When we get hurt, somebody betray us, somebody physically hurt us, emotionally hurt us. Or some of us in church who talk a lot about church hurt. You know, some church leader did something, said something, and it hurt us. And we, you know, we back away, we pull away. And so all of a sudden, our walls are up. Every barrier is up. We are not trusting of anyone. We not. We don't want to deal with people anymore. We adjust how we deal with people because you know. Don't talk about taking one person's fat and frying somebody else in. That's what we do, and, I, and we do it a lot. And our pain causes us to do that. But what we said on Sunday was that don't allow your pain to take the place of your praise or to even be louder than your praise. Not negating the pain at all. But you have the choice. We'll talk about choice in a minute. You have the choice to adjust your lens and look through the eyes of faith and to still move on. Why? Because you have a God who sent his son to die for the very pain that you felt. And not only that, but he is able to heal every kind of pain that you could ever feel. So it don't make sense. You allow for your vision to be clouded and it now warps everything that you do going forward. Second thing we talked about was that um, your experiences do not determine your value. God does. Man... When you think about all of the persons out of that same pain, out of that same hurt, somebody says something to you, tell you that you'd never amount to anything, and so you just live 
how you want to live. Somebody tell you, you chat too much, so you just stop talking. Somebody tell you, to, so you're too inquisitive, and you just see you not. Know stop being, mar stop marveling at wonder, and, and, and stop being investigative, and so on. Them tell you, so you're fat, and you're ugly, and you're big, and you, 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 they use your physical thing. Are oh, you too muggy, you're skinny, you're scrawny, you look like you need some food. And those very things can become so painful. You too this, you too that. Something with you. Or maybe somebody broke your heart. How about that? Somebody broke your heart. And you decide, you know, I'm going to trust again. Nah. And so, and, and, and you decide that, you know what? Well, maybe I wasn't worth it after all. Because they said some cruel things to you. Because people are cruel. People can be very cruel. And you have to understand that a lot of times people speak out of their own hurt and their own pain. And so because of that, they end up breaking, they said bro broken people break people. And it, it's, it's so profound. Because if we think back, if we're to be honest, can, can we just talk a second? We can be honest a little bit. Don't it. When we are in that place of brokenness, it's very easy to see the negative in other people. Talk truth. Don't it? So, and we find ourselves articulating those very things that people will say about us. We speak it to ourselves, and then we may spew it on others and continue this vicious cycle that is going on. So, I want to challenge somebody again. Your experiences do not determine your value. You are valuable to God. You are loved by God. You are valued by Him. And because you are valued, you are worth it. The, the, the last point that we made on Sunday was, you know, change your lens and change your life. Listen. If we adjust our lens, if we look at all the life experiences we have had, we would realize that when we read Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28 is the biggest lens changer, one of the biggest lens changer written in scripture. How God is able to take a thing and cause it to work for our good. And to cause it that he will turn it around for our good. Why? Because we love God and because he called us according to his divine purpose. Listen to me. So it means, therefore, that if we start looking at the different things we go through through the lens of God, then we can now see the good in the evil. We said on Sunday that you need resistance to build weights. For those of us who are gym junkies, you know, we go to gym, we exercise. If you want to build muscle, if you don't have literal free weights, you can use your body weight as muscle to, 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 to help build muscle. You, can, you have the weights machines and all these things, and you use those because you want to build muscle, and you want to build strength. And if you want to build strength, then you have to be pushing against something that is pushing against you. You have to be experiencing resistance to be able to get stronger. So you see, there is purpose to our pain. But we can only get to that place if we change our lens. If we look at our experiences through different, a dif a, a, a different, from a different perspective, then we will realize that God is is not going to allow the thing to break us even though we feel so that feeling something there so if we follow our feelings sometimes can i just say this if we follow our feelings sometimes we will feel as though we cannot survive we can't cope we can't take no more we can and guess what can i can i say something controversial that i discovered in my own life you let me come a little closer you and i really have no clue of the full capacity that God has put inside of us. It's only God know it. And this is why we have to trust him in those moments that if a situation or a circumstance comes into our environment, then clearly we are, with his, with his strength, with his enabling, we are going to be able to get through it. 
but we have to change our lens. We have to be looking from a different perspective so that we are able to go through and come out on the other side. There are some examples that we raised that I want to flesh out a little bit more today. I want us to look at this evening. We talked about Leah. Talked about Leah. Leah was Jacob's wife. Leah was, was, was the wife that Jacob didn't want. Read the scriptures if you get the backstory. But Leah was the wife that Jacob didn't want. He wanted her sister, her younger sister, Rachel. So Leah decides that she's going to have some children. She wants children. And you know what is interesting? The Bible says, when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rachel remained childless. This, of course, is um, Genesis 29. And Leah's first child, when she got pregnant, she called him Reuben. Because she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. You see that reason? Leah is now rejoicing because having a son, of course, is a big thing in Israel. But this now means that she has had a son. So now she has had the preferred child. So surely Jacob will love her. Didn't change nothing. She conceives again. And she has a second son and she calls him Simeon. And she says, the Lord, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. Again, her rejoicing is because, is, she says, the Lord so and Lord so and so, no, yeah, but you know, her real underlying reason, she was trying to get her husband's attention. She called him Simeon. Simeon, of course, he who hears. And then she conceives a third time. And she says, you know, now at last my husband will become attached to me. Because I've given him three sons. And Levi, she calls him Levi. Levi means attached or joined. Are we seeing a, a, a thing here? So she names her children out of her pain. And then she conceives a fourth time. And when she gives birth to another son, she says, this time, I will praise the Lord. Leah realized that no matter what she did, she had to adjust her lens because Jacob was still not paying attention. The attention that she wanted, that thing she was looking for, she wasn't getting it. She said, you know what? Maybe if I really look to the one who is really giving me the blessing, maybe I will find my worth there. And so she names that child um, Judah, which means praise or let him, let God be praised. One of the things that we struggle with as human beings, one of the things we struggle with as God's people, is that our pain talks so loud, you see? That if we're not careful, we become fixated on it. And if we're not careful, we are defined by it. By the way, send me questions. Type in the comments and send us some questions so we can answer them and so on. We have this constant fixation on our pain. And so our pain defines our response to life and to the circumstances and the vicissitudes of life. If we are not careful, our constant fixation on our pain, on our experiences. You know, like when somebody says, somebody loses a loved one, and it is a, it's a painful thing to experience if you have lost a loved one. A friend, a family member, somebody who is close to you, someone who is dear to you. And you know, sometimes in our pain, people are, they don't, they don't know what to say to us. So sometimes they, they say the wrong things and, and we react to it. And like, you know, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm grieving. I, I confess, I have used it before. Um, I'm grieving. And, 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 and we expect that that's supposed to qualify why we said or we reacted the way that we reacted. And in many instances, our experiences and because our lens have become so murky that we use those experiences to excuse 
some behavior that we that, that we display to excuse why I can't trust anybody because I was hurt before and I was betrayed and as if everybody is a Judas. Everybody isn't a Judas. But somehow, because our lens are murky, we now handle everybody like that and in our brokenness, we break people as well. I, 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 I met upon this recently and, and it just hit me. It says, whoever or whatever has your attention has your devotion whoever or whatever has your attention it has your devotion what does that mean if I am constantly defined by my experiences then it means that it now diminishes the, 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 the way that God can move in my life because if this is what I use to define myself, if this is what I use to define how I respond to things, how I saw me stay, I saw, I saw me turn, if this is what we do, then it means therefore that we tie God's hand from moving on our behalf. Because if we don't, if we accept it, as how we are, then we will see no need for God to change us. Because our lens murky. So we don't see the need to change the lens. And we've gotten so accustomed to looking through murky lens that we think that this is how the world is. I want to challenge us today. I want to challenge us this evening that we need to adjust our lens. Take off the glasses, take off the things that we're looking through. Give it to God. Say, God, look here. I am not sure if how I am seeing this. This is how it is supposed to be. But God, the truth is, this is how I am feeling. And I want to hand it over to you, Lord. I want to give it to you. I put on my glasses because I really can't see without it. I want to give it back to you, God. Because my pain is dictating my life. And I am tired of it. And there's another woman in scripture. We briefly mentioned her son on Sunday, Jabez. Now, everybody loves the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. Let me just look for this scripture and tell you how it goes. Oh, that you would... First, First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable in the middle of genealogy. Fascinating. In the middle of genealogy, this person give birth to that person, give birth to that person, give birth to that person. In the midst of that, the Bible says, 1 Chronicles 4, 9, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. The meaning of the name Jabez. Pain. And out of her pain... She named her child, which means every time she spoke his name, when she said Jabez, was saying pain, pain. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So, of course, and you know that there's life and death in the paw of the tongue, don't it? So every time you confess that, you can imagine what you're speaking over, your situation, your child, your, 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 whatever's happening with you. Every time you articulate that negative thing, you're going to read the foot because the second part of that verse in Proverbs that said there's life and death in the power of the tongue said he what loves the fruit of it thereof, him shall him go reap it, he's going to reap the fruits thereof. The Bible says Jabez cried out to God of Israel, the God of Israel and said, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Thank God that Jabez, the child who was named Pain, looked to God to change his lens. And say, look here, drop your hand for me. Not to drop your hand off for me. Keep me from pain. Keep me from evil. Keep your hand on me. Bless me. And enlarge my territory. And God, see that Romans 28, 28, 28 principle coming in again? Causing all things to work for our good. There's, there's another example in scripture. 
Eli, who was a prophet in Israel, Eli is the same Eli, priest rather, he was a priest in Israel. He, um, Eli was the same Eli who when Samuel was a child, he says, go back and when you hear the voice of the Lord talking, he says, speak Lord thy servant, here it's same Eli. Eli says, Eli is, Israel is in battle against the Philistines. Eli hears that the Ark of the Covenant has been removed and stolen by the Philistines. And he also hears that his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And Eli falls over, falls backwards, and breaks his neck and dies. His daughter-in-law hears that the ark has been stolen. And, and, and her father-in-law is dead, and her husband and her brother-in-law is dead. And she immediately goes into labor because she was pregnant. She immediately goes into labor. Do you know what she called her child? Ichabod. Do you know what Ichabod means? The glory of God has departed from Israel. Again, somebody whose lens wasn't changed. So as far as she's concerned, there is no hope. So she's hopeless and because she's hopeless, she names a child. The glory of God has departed. How many of us look at our circumstances and we just make a declaration over it without even thinking that what we're saying is what we're going to have? You will have what you say. You know? One of the things I want us to point out why we have to change our lens. The truth is that we see our life around right now. We simply can't afford it. We can't afford to not change our lens. We can't afford to keep looking at things. Look here. Is this a world now? Keep the way that we're accustomed to how we're keeping right now. For us to survive in this current dispensation and whatever there is to come afterwards, we are going to have to be looking at things very differently. We are going to have to change our lens. We are going to have to adjust how we see things and adjust how we see God. In this dispensation can I tell you if we are stuck dealing with the same challenges same demons same devils every year every month every week every day we're not making no progress we're not growing no we have clearly that 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 is not going to work anymore if we want to experience something different it is said that it is a mad person who keeps doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Now, now let's talk about it for a second. It is crazy for us to think that we can do the same thing over and over and get the same and get a different result. We're going to get the same thing. So if we keep spewing negativity, we're going to reap the fruit of it. If we keep saying to this child that we think is a problem child because we don't understand that God ever meant no problem child. Mm -mm. It is for us to figure out, to go back to the manufacturer and say, manufacturer, what, how do I raise this child? What do you give me this child? What this child must do? And then he can tell you what input inside that child and here's what you do to raise this child. If you keep looking at the child and call him problem child, where, where do you going to get? So, so problem. If, we, if we're in our jobs, Lord, I hate this work. Lord, I can't stand the people. I can't wait to leave. I can't wait. You are never going to experience anything different other than what you say. What if you adjust your lens and say, Lord, why am I in this workplace environment? Why you put me here? What am I supposed to do? You see, if we understand that we are ambassadors, God's ambassadors in the earth realm, kingdom ambassadors, then we will understand that one, as God's people, our steps are ordered. And two, he is going to put us in a place wherever as he, as, as he guides our steps and he will put us in circumstances that may be uncomfortable for us. I'm sure no tea bag want hot water necessarily but if the tea bag is going to be useful it have to go into hot water because the ingredients in it 
the fullness of it only comes out in hot water. So sometimes the thing is, the, 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 the experiences are difficult and, and we're not trying to put up a thing. Life is challenging. We're going to have to adjust our lens. We're going to have to look again and see that, you know, perhaps God is saying something in this moment. So, remember now, send in your questions, send in your questions, send in your comments. We're going to have to ensure that God, we, we give God room so that he can move in our lives. So we can't afford to stay at baby stage. No baby stays at baby stage. Every baby, every child, every adult was once a child. We were once baby and breast. We get bottle. The little after that, we start get Gerber. And we start get all kind of other things. This is not an advertisement for Gerber now, but just so you know. Eating other kinds of food. And we start to crush up banana and crush up pumpkin and crush up potato and all these things. And begin to, even our very diet begins to change. And as we grow, we begin to eat a different kind of food. No adult goes into a store and buys a tin of Similac for themselves. None. Because we grow. And because we grow, then we are going to have to ensure that we are getting the right kind of nutrition. To get the right kind of, kind of nutrition, that means we have to see ourselves as adults. Because if we think that we're still children, we're going to want to wear adult diapers. And we're going to want to, to be constantly taking care of us and doing these things that are not going to benefit us at all in the long run. So hear what? It means that we're going to have to adjust and how we adjust how we see ourselves. And when we see ourselves as people of worth, when you understand who you are, you won't put up with certain things. You won't, you won't allow yourself to walk up into certain circumstances because you know who you are. And you know who you are because you saw the manufacturer. So he could tell you who you are and show you how valuable you are. And he says, look at yourself through my eyes. Let me show you how I see you. When I look at you, what, what, what I see in you. And when we allow God to do that in our lives, let me tell you something. We'll be amazed the shackles and the weights that will drop off us when we see ourselves the way, or we see others around us the way that God sees us. Here's the last thing I want to, I want to share with us. You know, the Bible talks about our minds being renewed. Not being conformed to the world, but being transformed by having our mind refreshed and renewed. How do we change our lens? Why do we have to change it? Because we can't afford to keep looking at things the same way. We're going to have to adjust our lens. How do we adjust our lens? We're going to have to refresh. You know, like sometimes the glasses get murky because of how we handle it and we touch it. And sometimes at something, I mean, our, our fingers might touch the, the lens and so on. We take it off and wash it and we put it on back so we can see again. Same way. We have to wash the lens of our spirits with the word of God. Why the word of God? That is because it is the, the it is, it is, it, man, the Bible is so amazing. It is food. It is bread, it is water, it is life-giving, it is whatever you need, it is in the word. So we have to renew our minds by reading the word. And in renewing our minds, our perspective, our lenses will change. So that we will be able to see and to determine what God's will is for our life. That's Romans 12, 2 if you don't believe me. Romans 12, 2, King James says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye, Ooh, I love the King James, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it is then that you will prove what the good and perfect will of God is for your life. So you have to adjust your lens by renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. You see, when our, legs, when our lens are murky, when we don't see well, because of different things that are, that are touching, the, touching the lens of our lives, touching our eyes, natural eyes, spiritual eyes, then you realize that you can't walk straight. Everything is affected by it. 
have to change your lens, have to change your lens. If we're going to be relevant now and relevant post COVID-19, we're going to have to change our lens. We're going to have to stop seeing ourselves as weak and puny and understand when I'm at my worst, God is at his best. So therefore, I bring my weaknesses, I bring my challenges, I bring my struggles to God and let him strengthen me. Let him demonstrate his strength. Let him show his glory. In my weakness, talk about the blind man on Sunday when disciples ask Jesus, who sinned? Him or his parents? I'm saying, mm -mm, none of them. He was blind, born blind, so that God's glory can be demonstrated in him. And then Jesus heals him, and then everybody who knows that he was a blind man now sees him walking around and says, Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Not the same blind man that. But for God's glory. He was born blind and everybody saw him blind and then everybody could see him seeing and walking around seeing because his literal lens were changed for God's glory. Could it be that some of what you're going through in your life is to demonstrate God's glory to you, to show you who God's glory, who God is and then for the people around to see God's glory and God's strength and God's power at work in you. Andre Crouch have a song. He says, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. And I wouldn't know what faith in his word could do. So through it all, I've, I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to depend on his word. So here is that what we're doing now. I want to take some questions. Are there any questions? Let's, let's, let's look at some questions. I am getting some questions here. Woo-wee. How do I know when it is time to change a lens I've been wearing or seeing through my whole life? When what you are doing is not working. When the way that you are when the way that you are responding to a thing is not giving you the desired results, then it is time to adjust your lens. Time to adjust your perspective. Perhaps this is an opportunity for God to show up strong in my life. Perhaps this is a way to, 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 to see God's strength made perfect in my time of weakness. When However, I've been doing it, not working. When that now keep, is time. Just like how I know, and you know for those of us who wear glasses, maybe tell them who don't wear glasses. When you, do, when you have any glasses, you're still not say, well, you know so it's time to change the glasses. No matter how much you watch it and thing, if you can't see, you can't see, it's time to change. All right. What if I feel it's too late for me to change, man? It's never too late. That's until you die. As long as you are alive and breathing, and as long as God remains, God, and I promise you, he is not going to change his mind about you. He is not changing. And because God isn't changing his opinion of you, then he will always provide an opportunity for you to change your lens. Remember, now, his word says, come. You who are heavy laden and weary, I'm going to give you rest. Take on, give me your yoke. Because your yoke heavy. Take on mine because mine is light. It is never too late. It is never too late. Can I tell you? Let me, let me give you a quick example. I graduated. I finished University of the West Indies 1995. I was in the graduating batch of 1996. In this my 47th year on planet earth i am just now pursuing a master's degree after all these years you would think that by now we should have at least three degree under my belt I should have at least done so and so and so and so but it just wasn't the time and i wasn't where i was supposed to be and as my life progressed and as god revealed more of his will he says now you're ready now is the time to go and do it no i'm a master's student it's never too late. Because at 47, you're supposed to be saying, No, sir. My brain can't find this schoolwork again. Is it challenging? Of course. Can I do it? Yes. Why? Because God 
open the door and as long as he opens the door it means that there is always a possibility of me succeeding he would not open the door for me to fail praise god let me take another question what do i do when people in your life are preventing you from changing your lens I'm imagining that you're thinking that, that what you're what you're meaning is that they keep spewing negative negativity or they, they they keep up that kind of conversation around you. If you know those of us who come from country, no, not even come from country. Those of us who who into horticulture and everything, you have to prune a thing to get more out of it. You have to cut off the dead things so that life can spring. I'm saying that it sounds easy. It's difficult. But in the same way, if a snake bites you, you look for the antidote immediately because you want the sting and the venom pulled out of you. In the same way, you have to guard your heart and mind, guard your environment, so that those who are around you are speaking life into you. Because sometimes, Oh man, it can get so difficult. Can I just tell you it can get so difficult when you're around persons who keep spewing negative negativity? What do I do when people in your life are preventing you from changing your lens? Can I say to you, it is you wearing the lens? Can I say to you that you have the God-given power to say, God, this is not working out so wonderful. I feel like them are prevent me from doing whatever, Lord. Strengthen me. So I can make the adjustments that I need to make. Maybe I need to separate myself from them. Maybe they don't need to be in my space anymore. To everything there is a season. And a time for everything under the sun. And if I feel like it's a little bigger than me, then I escalate it to my big brother Jesus. I say, Jesus, I need your help. Make us some strategy, please. I promise you, he has strategies on how to help us. Because we have to make the change nobody can make the change for us is we who have to do it so when we give persons the power to tell us certain things and we think that they are the ones who are causing me not to change my lens mm -mm. you have to change you have to change your lens you are the one have to take it off and say no this pair of glasses is not working no more I'm going to need new lens. This person is not good for me. This company of people, not good for me. Does it mean, again, I put out my glasses because I really can't see without it. Do, does this mean I'm going to be mean and say, you know what, I'm done with you and everything? No, I'm not saying that. Everything but the season, good grace. Because you know what? People sometimes don't do better because they don't know better. And in the same way that God extends grace to us, we extend grace to them. But the time comes when you have to separate yourselves so that you can grow. You have to prune a thing so it can flourish even more. Let me take another qu quick question. <clears throat> what if I have changed my lens? I have to change the frame. <laughs> wow. That's an interesting question. If the frame is made, is built on the word then you use the word to help you to see things differently thank you holy spirit you're so relevant if the frame if the structure that holds the lens is is, is shaky then the lens will drop out you're consequently be losing lens, you're going to be changing lens and all kind of foolishness. So the frame, the structure, that which holds your perspective has to be built, has to be solid. And may I suggest to us that we use the frame. Remember that Romans 12, 2, renewing our minds? That's the frame. That we, so when our minds are renewed, our perspective is renewed. Oh God, I love it. Let me take one final question. What are some practical ways for you to change your lens, for you to care for your lens, even after changing them. You know, I have I have a son who is who is a fitness instructor, and and my son 
would tell me that if I want to maintain a particular body size, body weight, mass and all these things, I need to be eating certain kinds of food, I need to be doing a certain hours of exercise, I need to be drinking a lot of water and so on and all these things. In the same way, the, some practical ways for us to care for our lens, so we guard, the Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it the issues of life flow. How do you guard your heart? You guard your heart by watching what you ingest. Eye, eye gates, ear gates. Because whatever comes in, say it all the time, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever we ingest will come back out. And as we spew certain, certain things out, because see, if it's not inside of you, it can't come out of you. So we have to ensure that we are ingesting positivity. I'm not, and I'm not I'm talking about the power of positive thinking. I'm talking about I'm talking about basing that positive thinking on the word of God. Yes? We're talking about looking at things. So so when the challenges come, when the problems come, and problems are gonna come. Challenges are going to come. Sickness going to come. Disease going to come. Oh, God, this is life. Life happens. Sometimes you can't pay your bills. Sometimes I've, I've testified different, different times of this, this instance when I was living in a rented situation. I couldn't pay the rent. All along I had my salary. I never needed God. I had my salary. Thank you Lord for the job. But I never had to ask the Lord for anything because I had a good salary. When, I, when the Lord pulled me away from the working world and says, come spend some time with me, and that was nine years, and I had to learn to lean on God, it was during that moment that I discovered that it was more than just saying, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his great. I could sing it with assurance because I saw him provide. Because I couldn't do it for myself. How about those times when some of you just call him and say, you know, you just cross man and I look everything all right with you? And it, like, even in this COVID-19 dispensation. You know, I was thinking about you the other day and everything and say, you, 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 you're good, you're all right, you, you need anything? Man, go to my market, you need anything? You know, I need one bread, I need some. All right, don't worry yourself, we'll sort you out. If you don't have a need, then you won't learn God to be provider. If you don't get sick, you won't learn him to be healer, Rafa. If you don't ever get lonely, then you will never know God to be Shama. I am always there. Rohai, good shepherd. If you don't have the need, you won't learn these things. So how do we ensure that we care for our lens after we change them? Ensure that we are constantly renewing our minds. That we are constantly ensuring that we are feeding ourselves on God's word. Always oh, look into him for his perspective and then watch him work. And as we see him moving in our lives, we will see how quickly it, we, it will we'll get to the place where we are able to quickly adjust our perspective because we are learning more and more, because we are growing. No longer babies, we are growing. I want to wrap this up. I want to pray for somebody who is struggling with some issues, struggling with the lens that we have, struggling with things that have been spoken over us, struggling with all these things struggling with all of these different things that we're facing struggling in this covid 19 dispensation feeling overwhelmed feeling like god i can't manage somebody who does not yet know jesus as lord and savior i want to pray for you at this time so bow your heads right where you are let's pray heavenly father in the name of jesus we give you praise and honor and glory that you are a faithful God. We are calling you faithful not because somebody else has told us. We are calling you faithful because you have proven yourself to be just that. Father, we praise and we come to you now daddy and we lift up everyone who is on these streams oh god tuning in and listening this evening father we pray in the name of jesus for every hurting heart 
everyone who has had some negative words spoken over them and it has crippled them father in the name of Jesus we come against the plans of the enemy and we ask that you will break asunder those chains of their lives oh God I pray that they will look to you from where their help comes because their help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth and he will not cause your foot to slip he who keeps Israel is not asleep Father God, I pray that you will cause them to build their faith, put their confidence in you. I pray you will give them the strength to let go, God, to let go of those things, Lord God, that they have held on to for so long. Those things that have defined them for so long, where their pain has been louder than their praise, where their pain has caused their lens, oh God, to become so distorted, where their vision becomes so distorted. Father, I ask you that you'll give them the strength to let it go, let it go, to release it, that they, that, that they will know that they're not to be defined by their pain they're not defined by their experiences as it is you who gets to define them you mighty God the author and the finisher of our faith we pray oh God for everyone who is afraid oh God to let go afraid and don't know the next step to turn those who have not yet given their hearts to you I pray in the name of Jesus that as your Holy Spirit moves upon them and moves through them oh God that they will open themselves up to you and they will give their hearts to you today be who you are that you will reveal yourself to us in such magnificent and magnanimous ways that God we will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are real you're not a figment of our imagination father god we love you with every fiber of our being and we worship you and we bless you now in the name of jesus amen amen we love you thank you for tuning in join us again on sunday morning 10 30 right here instagram facebook youtube like subscribe and share. We love you. See you again on Sunday.